Hi, one sorry for being late. Hi, Lazar. <laughs> oh, sure. Just like a public chair. So, Lazar? Lazar? Huh? Where's five? Move salt to five with his buddy. What? Everyone can hear me now. I think you're recording, by the way. I know, I know, I know. Just one minute. I suddenly have a half screen. I'm not sure why. Okay, bye. Whatever this is. What happened here? Just one minute, guys. I have to... Why did my email come up? One minute. There we are. Okay. I mean, that's a different partial. It's what you see. It depends how deep you look. Uh, you can look at a piece of Gemara and someone else can look at a piece of Gemara. You'll see two different things. It's that anything in life is that way. You know, you can see things superficially and you can see unbelievable things. Just look at it. See, wow, it's crazy. Obviously, the deeper you think and the more you know, you read and you understand the, the, the profundity of the language of Chazal and definitely of Sukkim, you see so much more. Uh, here's an example. A person which is a, um, a chemistry major, if he, he's capable of seeing so much more into a glass of Coca-Cola than you, he will not just see the, bicar the, 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 the the carbonated water with some caramel flavor. He'll actually see, if he, if, he, the, if he really thinks, he'll see whatever chemistry is there. He'll look at water and say H2O. <laughs> you see other things. That is the idea. What do you think a professional is supposed to do? A scientist is supposed to see reality through science. If he's really a scientist, he's not just a guy walking around with information. So one has to understand that the deeper we see things, the more our deep, we have a deeper hakora. ultimately our tefillah is deeper and more profound and therefore is answered at different levels. And that you cite, I, I've learned multiple times from the Ramban, and here I'm gonna read a few Rambans to understand a certain concept, ending up today hopefully with a Derech Hashem of the Ramchal. Ramban writes in Beratius and Perik Aleph on the first Pasuk. It says, if you, ha you have it in your sheets, we have to thank Mayer for making this sheet. Lama lehidim lema lukim bara Beratius. Why does it say Beratius bara lukim? Why doesn't it say lukim bara Beratius? So to give Dr. Ramban, Teda, you should know, Kiyal Derecha Emes. Hakosuv 
that in all truth, if you want to know the Pasuk, when it says, talking about physical creation, is actually inferring to the upper echelons of truth, what we would call the source reality, what you would call the metaphysical source of it all. And then he continues, he says, Milat Perashis, Tirmais Bechachma. And that's actually what Unculus writes, Perashis Bechachmasa. Reishis is an inference for the idea of Chachma. Shu Reishit Arashim. This is the beginning of all. Kashe Iskarti. Lachen Ti Gemu Betagim Yerushalmi Bechachma. So I will explain this in two words. It's, it's very profound. It basically one understands when you look at the Chumash once again. The Torah is written in a way which you can understand is specifically when we talk about Maisa Bereishis. We're really not talking about the, the external way that you see it is a very childish little story. You know, Nasa Adam, God took a little dust and he sat in the sandbox and formed a man and blew into him and he became alive. You know, it's good for a storybook. It's very nice to learn that way in Cheder. You must understand that this is obviously talking something much way beyond your scope, telling to you in some kind of a metaphoric form. Do you really think God had done this to do but to walk in the sandbox and form a man and blow into it? Does that create, how does, how does earth become derma for goodness sakes? There's a process here which is beyond your scope of understanding. You must understand that this is a metaphor. Whatever alpha is, be a side offer in a metaphysical reality, when you say you are offered, do you really think this is earth? I've showered, you know, especially now, you know, in the hygiene. Uh, there's no earth here, okay? And yet I was taken from earth. You have to understand that the Ramban says, We're talking about the primary metaphysical source called earth, what it is in its source form. That's what God's talking about. It uses metaphoric full language here. And the fact of the matter is the earth here is nothing more than an expression of that Adama Hel Yaina. I want to read this in Ramban. This I know that would be the Oxid Shemaisalak. Let's read Ramban. Ramban is very important. So to Ramban again. Taydak Yadercha Emes Akosiv Yagid Bitahtoinim Birmaisla El Yoinim. Umilad Bure Sheet Tirmos Bikhma. Because what is the first thing, if anybody wants to do anything, what's the first thing he has to have? He has to have an idea of what he wants to do. He has to have an idea of how to do it. If we want to describe you as an interactive persona to do anything, you first have to have chachman, which means you have an idea of what you want to do, how you want to do, or whatever you were going to do. You decide to do things without thinking, so it's also a chachma. I am going to move my hands in a certain form without knowing how. Okay, that's also true. The first point of any human being doing moving is the pshat is chachma. That chachma afterwards is translated in his feelings and ultimately in his interaction of what he does. So we say, what did God create the world with? The beginnings of Seder Eishtalshul, the beginnings of all beginnings of the infinite God interacting with anything is first of all, he expressed his chachma. That means the Chachma existed before God decided to express it in creation. This is, by the way, the source of Torah Kodma La'olam. Because we know Torah doesn't mean Babakam Babansi, we're not there, Kodin Shibar La'olam. We don't have to be stupid and think that way. We understand the Babakam Babansi are also just as when you learn a Mishnah, like a Mensch, through the Gemara and finally through the Rishonim, and you don't have to think, you see so much there that you wouldn't have seen if you just. I just learned the Mishnah, like we, I learned Mishnah since I was a little baby. I mean, of course. I told you once, I won color war for my team just by, 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 by memorizing Mishnah. You know, yeah, big deal. Mishnah. It's very important. Okay? It's very important to learn Mishnah, but you have to understand it. But you can imagine how much more you know Mishnah after you know Bavli and Yerushalmi. Wow, the Mishnah are like frightening. They're cryptic, and every little word there means so much, and the way it's written means so much, and why this written, why this is for that one means so much. 
And that's why there's also a whole storm how to pass him from Mishnais. If you know the Klolim of Machlekes Vachakach Stam, etc., all the different Klolim, which you officially, once upon a time, the Amiroim knew the Klolim, and they could pass him from Mishnais. That's the din of uh, at the time it meant Mishnais. The Chachma was to know how to read the Mishnah intelligently. But there's also reading the Mishnah without intelligence. But the more that you're intelligent, that's what you see. You don't see any more of the stories. I remember when I first learned Shnayim Achzim Betalis as a child. I still remember my teacher, was Rabbi Avram Gross, was an Israeli Rebbe. His grandchild was my student in Karen Biyavna, something like 40 years ago. Uh, one of my favorite, even my private Rebbe. Also my, he was regular, my regular Rebbe in school. He was also my private Rebbe. I used to go to him twice a week to learn by him. So my first Mishnayis was Taki Baba Metziah. Actually, funnily enough, uh, we actually started from Shai Mercy, which is really interesting. Okay? I didn't learn brachas till later. It's very interesting how I had these weird teachers. We didn't start, everyone starts with brachas or with Elam I started Shai Mercy. Okay? So uh, that's why I like Baba Metziah in the stomach. So, uh, but, so uh, when I first looked at Mishnah, I was a little pipsqueak. And I said, these Jews are crazy. They fight over stuff they find in the street. Like, man, Shnayim Ozen Metalis, they found that a jacket in the street and two Jews. It looks like a bunch of violent people. They must be very poor because they don't have food. They don't have clothes. So they fight over a, a, a jacket they found in the street. Man, I walk down Bedford Avenue. I see a, a, a jacket there. I wouldn't pick it up with a stick. It probably has AIDS in it. I don't know what. Why, why not you? <laughs> I remember my reaction at the time. Like a little kid. You know, it's a Samodna Maisa. Were they that poor? It almost sounded like I was in the academic. I wanted to check, you know, the social background of the mission of type people fighting over a piece of clothes that they find in the street. Okay, that's what they do in other places. Okay, that's what it was at the beginning. A little later in life, it became, no, this is just a mushal. The Iker is the Piski Alacha there. Then I understood later in life that the Piski Alacha are also a mushal. It depends on the and the, Havan, the conceptual thinking, which is there, which is translated into Piski Alacha. And ultimately, once I got there, I can now extrapolate. Now this Mishnah is telling me meta principles, which in this little Mishnah here, I see Krisis, Tmure, Uktsun, and Pora. Now, so it started with first seeing a bunch of Jews fighting over some stuff they found on the street on Bedford Avenue. And it ended up, I don't know what, thinking about the Echves, this would open this up, open once it's up to Spanech, and see how the Rogachavra sees anything. He sees Kolotari Kula in every part of it. It's frightening to see how he thinks, because he had this enormous scope and enormous profound conceptual thinking. That's like the big boys, okay? Now, and he's nothing compared to the Arishayim, and the Arishayim were nothing compared to Amirayim. Wow, and then the Tanah, I don't even know how they saw things. They were like phenomenal. So one has to chop that one learns chumish and kosher to dab tirmiz, but how do you see things? She so tells you you want to understand the first of all, gracious Borla kings mean b'chokma with spheres the chokma hakadosh baruch was bara and was bara. That's number one when we parshas b'reishis. That's what the Ramban says that he does he, when he explains like who's the Torah should have started from a chayshis alachem. He said why why did they write b'reishis? No one understands it anyway. You want to tell me God created the world right, all the stories there, how it was done. This is what it's going to give you. That's what the Ramban writes. You should see it in the very beginning of Beresh. The Ramban continues over there on the Pasek, Tatcha or Zdeshe. So the Ramban, Be'itochen, She'yirmois Ba'oris Hadiskeris Ba'ba'ya Pasek Arishon. When it said, when it said, when it said, what does Shemayim V'Oritz mean? So the Ramban there says it does not mean the Oritz the way we know it and Shemayim the way we know it. It means to treat two primordial, what he calls eulic matters. Matter, which is base matter of creation, one matter to create all the conceptual world, or you call the, the metaphysical world, the world of neshamas, malachim, whatever it be, that's called shamayim. And oris means the primary matter for which earth was he formed, the material world. So there's shamayim, v'oris, the two primary matters which he made in that day through his chachma. And afterwards, for six days, he's like a cookie cutter, went and he made forms in that matter, which is the world that you see. 
It's like you spread out two doughs, one of infinite reality, or what you would call non-tangible and conceptual, metaphysical, and other a matter which is the source of physical reality. It's what you call energy, but how did he condense that energy and give it form? So everything, he took that energy and gave it different forms to different condensing of that energy. That's what's called making matter the way you know it. How did he make a tree? Basically, the primary matter of a tree and of a cow and the, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and of you are the same thing. LMI, what did he do? He basically condensed that energy, restricted it in certain forms. That's what gave it. The, uh, the, the tangibility that you have to when you say differences between a cow and a, uh, a, 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 and a tree, it's only because you're looking at things after they're condensed and restricted form. In primary matter, they're both the same. Anybody which is learning nuclear physics will tell you the same thing anyway. Okay, but this is what the Ramban writes. That's what it means. Bora means yesh mi yesh. Bora means that he formed. Okay, he formed it from a primary matter. That's what you have to start understanding when you look at reality. It's a very profound way of seeing things. You understand what I'm doing here. Once we understand any Seder Ishtalshus, the way this really works, we now begin to understand what does it mean that this comes from God? And what am I really asking for? Okay, where's the source of rain? When I ask God for rain, what am I really asking for? You see, you don't realize that little kid asks his father, oh God, God, give me this. He doesn't realize in order to have that, daddy has to work overtime. Oh, come on, dad, it's only X and Y. What do you mean? You don't hop. You're a little baby, don't hop. The guy's going to have to work overtime to make the money to get that. that the child doesn't hop. If you would realize every type that you're asking from a Kaddish Bochum, what you're asking him to do, which is who knows what, up there, Shmei Shemayim, you say, hey, <laughs> this is a big deal. There's a lot of stuff happening here. It's a very intricate process. And the more you appreciate that process, really, that all that goes directly to the infinite God, that's when you're going to get it. You just nag and say, come on, I need a little bit of rain. You idiot, you realize what I'm asking for? So you're not going to get it. To the depth that you understand, that's the depth that that feel is a real feel, a real hakpara. Once it's a real hakpara, it's going to happen. That's why these Rambans are super important. So he says afterwards, when the Kaj Boko Bar Shemaim Vo'ars, he says on the Pasit Tachi Ha'oritz Deshe, so the Ramban, V'yitachen she'yir mo'ez ba'oritz on his gas with by a Pasit Arishai. We're talking about the primary matter, which is called Oritz, that primary matter, which afterwards is formed into different forms. It was mitachia Oritz, he moshech mimen matzmiach. He took that primary matter and basically made it into a source of growth. The koyach atzmicha is what he added to that primary matter. Doesn't mean he looked at the earth, you know, right? you don't, what's earth? We have to change this chemical component that it should be something which will grow things from. No. God did not look at the earth. He looked at the primary creation existed and changing and modification existed in the primary status of the primary matter of creation. And it is there that he said, And what happens? So the Ramban continues, What emanated from that primary matter was different energies. Umehem samchu began different energies, which therefore had different kinds of smicha. I mean, different types of trees and different types of flowers and different types of grasses and different types of bushes. All these are different forms from the kayach hamatzmiach and the source reality, which translated itself differently once it received different forms. Are you understanding what I'm trying to say here? I'm trying to teach something. Look at every iota of nature and realize you have to think of it almost like you're thinking physics. You have to like realize that you know what this is? This is a form of a primary hulic matter. I really want you to read that first Ramban and Beratius, which really had no form. But that is the primary matter from which all it's what we let's just call it energy. And that energy was formed in different forms. And in the context of these forms, they have their separate identities, separate textures, separate properties. All these are properties due to the condensing and restricting of matter in a certain form. 
And when God wants to do something, let's understand carefully when God wants to make Kriya Siamsuf, he doesn't just cut the Red Sea. It means he changes the properties of the relationship of water, etc., up in Shmei Shamayim. And therefore, Ramele, it expresses itself in the Kriya Siamsuf of this world. And that's why Chazal said that all the waters of the world split. You don't really think that there were people there in China, which the Yellow River split. They said, who's this? They didn't have internet. They didn't know about Jews there. And I don't think that the, that the, that the, that the Iroquois living near, near Delaware over, or near Denver over there, it wasn't in Denver, in Colorado, in that area by the Colorado River, it split. Think of the great Mississippi, it split. What are you talking, are you crazy? But for, there's no one there. What's it going to give you? What do Chazal mean by a thing like that? It's obviously teaching you that the nations they change not in the specific ocean or sea, body of water here. It's a change in the basic concept of what is water, klape, certain anhaga of a Kaddish Bocha, or whatever it only be. It's expressed specifically by engagements in a certain way, but the modification is a modification in Shavish Hashrash in the very beginning of things. I'm trying to say the more we're aware of this, if you start praying for the beginning from to, 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 for the beginning of things and have them expressed in temporal reality, it's a different prayer. See, if you just pray at the level of temporal reality, you're like the little kid says, God, Dad, I need, you know, I, I need something. I need money for a concert. If you pray at the source reality, says, Dad, can you please work overtime to make some money to get me the concert, the money for the concert? Believe me, if the kid, father realizes, the child realizes what it takes, it's a totally different relationship. Don't you know that by now? God help you, you don't, you're young. When you get married, you'll find out. You're never supposed to figure out what the lady says. What does she really mean? Okay? What she says and what she means do not have to be the same thing. You have to chop out what's in there. It's like a Mishnah, to understand. This is what's happening here. So I want to take another Ramban. The Ramban continues there and says, and that actually happened. Once these energy emanated from the Eretz El Yoyne, once they were basically internalized in the Eretz El Yoyne, and then they emanated from the Eretz El Yoyne, what happens, reality is that the Earth starts growing things. So Tachi Oiz Deshe means the Kodesh Bochu modified the Eretz El Yoyne, giving it basically certain koiches at smicha, and thus memela, that Eretz el even now is the root reality of the Eretz et you hear this carefully, and any modification, the Eretz el is a change also in the Eretz et He's He taught me a new yusayt. You see, it's not as if the, the, there's something, source reality, now something else happened. No. It, the reality of down here is constantly nothing more than an expression of those laws of science of that source reality. Change the laws of the source reality, you have changed automatically anything which is here. That's what we call Ishtal Shalut. It's like a chain reaction. All of reality that we experience, according to the Ramban, is nothing more than an external expression of a profound source reality. It's again, you take this cup, should you change the equation of the physics of this, then the cup will change. <laughs> should you change, should you take away the laws of gravity, the cup will change. If you change the laws of, uh, of the form, if you change the laws of, uh, of uh, properties in, 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 its, in its prime source, this will automatically be different. This is a product of the total laws of science that we know, which that's why this form is kept the way it is. Take away laws of, of gravity, for example, or other laws which create the adhesiveness of this form, then the form would disperse. So you must always understand, Dr. Ramban, 
when Kodesh Baruch Hu is mamshich, a koyach matzmiach in Eretz HaElyoyna, ne'etzlu mikoycho ha-soydois l'minehem, u'mehem tzamchu began eden d'shoyim v'ilanot, u'mehem ba'olam. Sh'ne'emar, v'shlishi bara shalosh b'riot, ilanot, shoyim v'gan eden. Then he says, this is the pshat in the Gemara, in B'tzos HaBresh Yisrael, but it says, en l'cha esav ve'esav v'lamata, so, you know, when you're a kid, you think, oh, every, every blade of grass has an angel, which is like, it sounds like a dick in these novel. And he hits it and says, you got to grow. Okay, why does he have to hit it? Can't he be nice? You know, I remember reacting when I first saw this as a child. What does it mean? Dr. Ramban, it simply means to say it is constantly pushing its growth. It's called Koyach HaMatzmiach and the Eretz Yaina is what's causing growth of the Eretz HaTachtayna. And that's the Pshat when Chazal said, She'ein l'cha Esav ve'esav she'bo'elm. Every iota of reality is an expression of a supernal celestial reality. This is one Rambat. I want to see another one. The Ramban is also when he talks about Karbanis. When he talks about L'Avdav L'Shamra. When said that Adam Arishan was put in Gan Eden, La'avdu L'Shamra, so the Ramban says in Perik Beis, La'avdu L'Shamra, Rabbi Sainan, the Surah Baza, Amu Vibracious Rabbi, La'avdu L'Shamra, what is La'avdu L'Shamra? Ela Karbanus. So I said before, he didn't have much to do. What did he have to do? He had, in order for this to be that the world should grow and everything should work, he had to bring Karbanus. Shenemar Tavdun Esa Elohim. That's what we talk about, the Korban Atomit. The Korban Atomit is there to create the constant chef of a Kaddish for existence to continue to be. The Ramban explains, all vegetation and all living beings you need the energies of the primary energies, those supernal energies the way we discussed. And that's how they grow, and that's how they are nourished, that's how they exist. In other words, you have to understand, you need constant a nourishing through your for the to exist. Always look at reality. I mean, if you... It's two sciences, this is very simple. I, I can really understand, it'd be hard to understand before the world of science, physics, etc. has developed. But once, Baruch Hashem, we know we have a world which we, we know what chemistry is, we know what physics is. This is L'chayra B'yasa B'kutcha. But L'davonainu, people don't put on their physics glasses or their chemistry glasses. You know what I mean? You live a shallow reality. Well, he's telling you to put on your physics and chemistry glasses and ultimately up it with one notch, put on your metaphysical glasses too. So he's telling you, Now, Karbanis works. Kerbanis is something which creates some kind of a reaction, creates a reaction of Kaddish Baruch Hu, and therefore he has a reason, this rat, he do into what the El Yainim, whatever the supernal primary source things are. God has a whole thing there, and if you, you activate him, that he should change things, modify things in Olam El Yain. And from there, it goes to Simchei Gan Eden, which is also some kind of a metaphorical, metaphysical reality. And from them, it comes to Elam Agashmi. And what does it translate in? Ratzon Ubracha Sheikh That's Rambat. Kamesha Amru Yizbu Atze Hashem Aza Levana. Amru Abchanina Yizbu Chayeyen Yizbu Meimeyen Yizbu Mata Asar. What does that mean? So Rambat explains. When it says Yizbu Atze Hashem, and Reb Chanin says Yizbu Chayeyem, its core, its source, existence, life, that means Yisaydai Savel Yoinim. The metaphysical properties, its primary source reality, 
That means his special oitzer, which he brings geshem, which is also whatever that means, we'll still have to learn. That which ultimately will bring shefa and kaycha tzmicha in the world. We're still not talking about on the earth. That's the Ramban. This is, uh, you know, I think we, I really hope you have these sheets. I think you should learn these things carefully, because this is Yisaita, Yisaitis. This is not voodoo, it's not Chesidus. This is Yisaitis Amuna. I don't know how to tell it to you. You know, this is, my problem is I can't understand how you were bar mitzvah without being taught this. I'm not joking. You obviously, without knowing this, you can't really understand when you say Shema Yisrael Hashem Lekin Hashem Echod. You have no clue of what you're really saying. And we're not doing, this isn't Kabbalah, this is Ramban. Ramban writes that when he writes Kabbalah, okay, that's a, uh, don't, don't bother understanding. He, this is running through all the Perik Al-Bay's operations. This is Nigla. This is basic Yedia Sa'emis according to Judaism, okay? Another Ramban. Just to going to show you how come uh, Ramban. Next Ramban I'm going to show you is a Ramban in Peri Gimel Pasuk Chavez, where the Ramban writes Dava Amen, know and believe. Now, what does it mean know and believe? I mean, believe means to say it is something that you take for given and granted, and you're willing to live by that. Most of us believe in something. You definitely believe in the laws of gravity. I don't know. I hope so. <laughs> okay. I mean, uh, you, may, you, your existence is based on believing certain given realities for whatever reason you choose to believe them. And you live and die by them. You believe that if it's for us, that there's a coronavirus out there, you don't know it. You've only been taught by the media. For all you know, maybe it doesn't exist. Yet somehow, for whatever reason, you choose to believe the media and you're all stuck in your little cubby holes. Okay. V'chulu, v'chulu. Da means what? Internalize. Da, as we know, the Lushan is das means to say not just have cerebral knowledge, but translate it into emotional uh, knowledge. It was something that you see as tangible. Da v'hamein. Believe this and internalize it as a tangible reality. That would be the exact translation of those two words. Kigan Eden Ba'aretz. First of all, yes. There is, there is or was, rather, Gan Eden Ba'aretz. Uboy, in that Gan Eden at the time, therefore, if you're going to try looking it up on Google Maps, you won't find it anymore. Don't worry about it. Not like these guys trying to find the Ark of Noah or something like that. It doesn't exist anymore. Don't worry about it. But Dava made that there is, or rather was, that's what I'm trying to modify this. Gan Eden, but it's Uboy, it was at the time, Eitz Chaim, Eitz Das. Umishom Yatsa Na'ar, ve'yipared la'bar Rashim anirim lanu. And he starts explaining what they are, ki apras, ba'artzenu, ubigvoleinu. His understanding of uh, Eretz Yisro is a bit broad. <laughs> the pras, ba'artzenu, ubigvoleinu, I suggest you look the map. Upishan hu nilus mitzrayim, kedivrei harishaynim. But then he writes what I want to learn here. Aval kasher he ba'aretz, ken yesh ba'shamayim, dvarim yikaru chem. Tis the Gan Eden, and there's Arbor no Harais, Baila Mazen. But I want you to know in truth, the same thing, this is a mirror, literally, of what's found, so to speak, by Shemaim in this primary source. The Haim Le'ele Yesod. And what's up there in the heavens, in the primary reality, is the root of that which you see today with your tangible eyes here. So we talk about the Arbor, that's what you'll find. In different midrashim, giving significance to the Arba Naharot of Gan Eden, you must understand they're not. This is not just using a pasuk; it's explaining what the truth of the pasuk is. The, the pasuk is talking as the Ramban says when you, especially when you talk about Parshat Bereishis, Yedaber B'Tachtoinim B'Yirmes Loyal Yoinim. That's a Yisrael the Ramban uses constantly in this in in, in this parsha. There, you're looking at things. There's a something up there. When you say up there, means in a in a metaphysical form of existence, which is called Gan Eden, and there there are four Nahoros, whatever that means at that level. Now we have to figure out what the Arba Nahoros means in, a, in that source form. 
but this is the Ramban says, Moshe Amru Hamviani Hamelech Hadarav Shmelamed, and this is something beautiful. She Asid Hakadosh Baruch Hu Laharay says Yisrael Ginze Mora Machadoyim B'Shamay. He says one day we will all be aware of this and see it with our tangible selves. I don't think we'll see it with tangible meat eyes. It means our eyes will, our, our senses will be different, and we will experience this almost as if we're seeing it, like a virtual reality that we're experiencing totally. So, for sure, Ramban, that's how this is what it means. We will then be aware. We will no more have to believe of Eretz El Yaina, just as today. Hopefully, you don't have to believe in chemistry and physics. It, it's there, okay? The only problem is to internalize and see the world through that. Rather, if we would live through chemistry, I wouldn't be overweight. Let me tell you, I told you a million times, if we really lived through science, none of us would eat wrong, do anything wrong. We'd actually be healthy people. The only reason we're not healthy is because our... ...intuitive to the world of science. So the Kiddush is that even in metaphysics, that which we now we are going to teach and learn and try to bring into our core, which can be very hard to do, there's going to come be a time which or Hashem Hashem and that's what it means, the posse of Vi'ani HaMelech It's an unbelievable Ramban. Just to show you a little bit, Ramban explains what this means, these four Nahorais. He continues and writes, Nahorais Negin Abba Machnoi Shebomorai. Those four Nahoras, I can negate Arba Machnois of Malachim, Bamorim, they are the parallel to Nahoras. That's the site of Nahoras. When you look at the Prath, the Euphrates River, you must think about Soros Shomala, which is expressed, the Shirish of the Euphrates River, and that happens to be the sire of a certain Malchus. And there are four Malchus, which basically is our exile until finally we have, we have the Geula, as we learned to actually talk about yesterday. But here you have it. We have negative. This is the Ramban. It's frightening to think when we ask for something to change, God knows what he's asking God to do. He may be asking him to change history. Maybe asking him to make something which has affected him in so many different things. And all you think is, is this little kid, Dad, I need some extra thing. I want to have a joy ride. And you don't hop what's happening there, I forgot to give, it, to give it to you. You don't realize the ramifications. You don't realize how everything is tied together. And you're asking. You're asking. You know how, how, how that's pretty rough. I repeat again, these Rambans have to be learned. And here, um, um, I'm just going to take a little bit of a Derech Hashem, and hopefully the, the next, uh, we, uh, next week we'll elaborate on this. Derech Hashem of the Ramchal in Chelik Aleph Perik Hey. Mina ikrim agdoilim shibi adenu bi'i and ze'u, when the major principles in our hands are, she keneged kol ma shenimtze benimtzoim ha'shfeilim, Everything which is found in our temporal reality, there are transcendent energies up there, metaphorically, the word up doesn't really mean anything. Everything that we see here comes of a chain reaction from its source reality in the supernal worlds. Everything has its unique chain reaction, how it goes how God decided it would be. So he says, So when you look at, I don't know, a cockroach, a cat, you've got a, you look at a shore, you get an ox, a dumb ox. You go to the kibbutz and you see a dumb ox. You have that his shore is the shore of Merkava, so what do you think it means? God has a barn up there in his throne room? So obviously the word sure means something which is appropriately called one of the feet, he sits at the feet of God's Merkava. And that sure should be Merkava ultimately ends up somewhere down here in that little, that big animal that you see in the kibbutz. 
The Chach Miz, when you see that, does it remind you of where it's really from? Can you see it? Well, if you won't learn about it more in depth, that's why I want to see you, as you read these texts inside more and more. It'll never sink in. So this is what he says. Oid Mesurus Biadenu. Not only is there a chain reaction, but there is some kind of a malach, whatever that means, a tool of God, which his job is to make sure that the flow is done according to the Ratzon of HaKadosh Baruch and as we know one thing, there's a source reality which funnels down into a reality that we perceive. It's like saying chemistry ends up into a cup. And then there's something to make sure that the laws of science will stay and that, that, and that source reality will end up in a cup. Today we call it the laws of science. In Lush and Chazah, what they're saying, there's a malach, a tool which God uses to make sure this thing happens. There is a, just like you understand the laws of science, there are also, there are also the laws of metaphysics. And the laws of metaphysics depend on many things, including my type and mitzvahs and the opposite of them. And including Hakara, including Emunah, including all that. Those are also part of the same laws. And the Chiddush is that it's up to man to define how that will happen. Ike Mitzias Ha'adlam Zat Ramchal you know where they really are? You want things to change? You must go always, where is it? Where is it really It's only a told of what's up there, which is what you experience here. This is not just the way it is when it's originally made. Even when things change in a tree, things change in a rock, it means something changed in its primary source form. There's nothing here which doesn't come from a change there. That's the etc. So this is what he writes. This is basically the Ramban. So we've shown one thing before we start. What have you learned today? Just the beginning. This has to be understood if you want to be able to daven. Davening, I repeat, it's very, it's, it's obvious that we are, we, we are declaring dependency. It's more than that, the Chinuch teaches us. We not just depend dependency, we have to recognize and understand that everything is an expression of the infinite God. He is Koilo Hako. That's number one. We now started learning what does it mean when we say reality? What are you asking for? What does the change mean? We should come become a Rambans. That the true and, and, and summarize beautifully in the Ramchal. The truth of reality lies in its metaphysical source form. And all modifications happen there, and they are expressed in the, in the temporal reality that we experience. This isn't simple. This begins to explain to you, understand, just like you understand, like there's laws of science, there's laws of metaphysics. It's, I think that's, I think I know, that's what it means by Kriya Syamsuf, that things changed in the whole world. Because what God changed was in the primary source form. What he calls So we'll continue this next week, but I want you to understand when you start happening, you have to start being, first learn this again, be misbinding it, because at the end of the day, every time you ask for anything, you're really asking for something much more profound than you're thinking about. Don't be like the little kid which asks for money when he doesn't realize dad is going to be working overtime for it. Oh, Dad, I'd really like to go to this college, not to another. You know what you're really asking? <laughs> Etc. 
Okay, now it's not as if that you're bothering God, but he wants you to appreciate what he's doing. He wants you, he gives if you appreciate, understand, recognize. Admit, know what you're asking. That's not a Dover Pashit. Now, um, um, we will go on this further. I'm going to show you multiple things which are frightening, just what, what rain is, what these things are. Okay, we'll continue this Blinata next week. Okay, um, uh, tomorrow, regular learning. Bye. Have a great evening, morning, afternoon, wherever you are. Call to. Bye. Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you, Rabbi. Bye. Thank you, Rabbi. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.